Hey everybody, I'm in the woods again today. It's a beautiful sunny day out here and today I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks I know for some common camp crafts. These are some things that anybody could do at any camp and these are things that might make them easier for you. So stick around. To make the bow saw you're going to need a section of green wood that's about one and a half times the length of your blade. This is going to be very similar to the buck saw that I made in a previous video that is linked in the description below. You'll have to make notches in each end or split each end to accept the blade. I went a little bit of both here. And then you'll have to wrap each end to make sure that your split doesn't continue to travel up the length of your branch. Once you've got both ends wrapped, then you just simply add the blade. Wedge it into one side, and then wedge it into the other. You will have to bend your branch here into a bow shape, hence the name bow saw. So if you can find one with a natural curve in it, that's gonna help you. Here, mine ended up splitting a little bit along the back on the apex of the bow, but as long as it's not structurally critical, you can just trim that off. A bow saw will make your work a lot easier in terms of fatigue, but not really any faster. I took about the same amount of strokes with my hand saw. This exercise will be in removing stuck on food from your cookware. Since that's the case, I chose to make oatmeal and scrambled eggs for mine because those are the two stickiest things I could think of that were common among the backpacking community. Anytime you make eggs in a pan, they're gonna have this residue, unless it's a perfectly kept non-stick pan, which I don't think many of us bring into the woods. So this is an exercise in how to unstick a lot of what's left over after you're done eating. Okay, so here's the thing. As soon as you're done cooking, stoke your fire and put some water on to start heating up. Preferably, heat up your water in the thing you were cooking in. This will begin a process that cooks call deglazing. The water will literally boil and cook the food off of your dish or your cooking utensil. While this is cooking and boiling, you can enjoy your food. Once it starts to boil, then you can use your cooking utensils to help deglaze. You just kind of slowly scrape back and forth and get everything unstuck. You probably won't need this much water to deglaze. So what I do is I bring another small container, an empty chicken in a can, can to keep my hot water. Because at this point while you're cleaning, your hot water is precious. So what I do is I pour some of my hot water for reserve into my can and use a little bit here to do the cleaning. Just use your tools that you already have. You'll get most of it out of there. Technically, this is still edible because it's just water and eggs. So if you wanted, if you're uh, mindful about how much you waste, you can eat this. You can turn this into scrambled egg soup. In French cooking, when you use water to deglaze a pan like this, that's called a fond. And that's how they make a lot of meat sauces and dipping sauces. This is still technically all food. You could eat this. It's not very appetizing. It's gonna be very watery, but I am letting the hot water do its job in getting everything unstuck from the bottom of the cooking pan here. Now it's not, my spoon here isn't gonna get everything, but it's gonna get most of it. And what it doesn't get I'll show you here in a minute. Now for your oatmeal pan, pot, whatever, use your reserve hot water. Let that continue to heat up and you can swish around your hot water to use the same principle to deglaze your oatmeal from the sides of your container. The water will literally cook it off of there and you won't have to do too much scrubbing. Using hot water is the key. It's a germ killer and it allows you to skip using soap. Now, one thing I keep in my bag that nests right underneath my water bottle is a green scratch pad or really about a quarter of one from the kitchen at home. Uh, this helps me clean up no matter where I am. So if I have a river or a stream, 
I can rub this around in there all day. But since I'm out in the woods, not near a water source, I need to conserve the water I have. Use only a little bit to clean with because I need to use the rest to drink. So how do we kill the germs that are on these plates and things without soap? Well, take a little bit of our water to clean with and a little bit of water on the thing and then we grab a little bit of ash out of the fire. Ash is one of the components in soap, one of the active components. This was discovered by ancient people a long time ago. So just use a little bit of ash and that way you're not putting chemicals into the environment just so you can clean up your food. It does kill the germs. The hot water helps kill the germs. The ash helps kill the germs. The ash also acts as a bit of a grit to help finish scraping everything else. Get it off of there. And this way, you can get things really actually clean without putting chemicals from the store into the environment that you're enjoying the natural beauty of. Then when everything's pretty well food free, just when you use one of your bandanas to dry everything off. And then it's ready to put back in your bag and take with you and use again. It doesn't have to be taken home to be run through the dishwasher. You've done a good job getting all the food particles off so there's no more food scent. And the ash has done a good job getting the germs off. And so now that's ready to use again. Do the same thing with your cook pot. A little bit of water, a little bit of ash, start scrubbing. Another thing to remember is that ash will do an amazing job cleaning your cook pot and getting all this soot off of there. I generally like the soot on mine because a dark surface heats up faster than a light surface. But for the purpose of the video, I'll give it a show. This ash really does the trick. Now, if I use a part of the scrubby that did not have the ash on it up here, for example, it doesn't do such a good job. It's really that the chemicals in the ash that help it do what it's supposed to do. I'll do the whole bottom of the cook pot here with a little bit of ash on it from the fire. This will blacken back up next time I use it anyway. So for those of you that like your, your cookware in the field, stainless steel, squeaky clean, now you know you don't need to bring soap anymore. Just use ash. It's natural. It's not gonna harm the environment. And you've always got it when you're cooking. Next, we're gonna talk about making a tripod. There's a lot of other YouTubers out there showing special lashes that you need to use to make a tripod. I don't buy it. There's gotta be an easier way. That special uh, tripod lashing takes like a ton of cordage and a ton of time. And really, in most cases, I don't think you need to go that far. Let me show you how I make a tripod. First, you gotta start with three pieces of wood. This is what, these are the three parts for our tripod. Instead of laying them all side by side and lashing them in and out, round and round, uh, just throw a, throw a cordage around all three of them. I'll show you how it works, watch this. I'm using blue here for contrast and clarity. Leave a little bit of a tail on it, but tie a slip knot. and put it around one of your pieces of wood. Line the other two up wherever you want them and just wrap this around there five or six times. One, two, three, four, five. And then tie it off to the first piece you left sticking out. Regular old square knot should be just fine. There's your tripod lash. This isn't that hard, don't overthink it. Watch how well it works. All I gotta do is spread these out like you normally would. It works just fine. This will take a ton of weight, I can lean on it. That lash isn't going anywhere, I'm putting my full body weight on it. So don't spend hours and hours and hours learning the perfect lashing to try to set up a tripod when this will do just fine for most things. 
Now, with that being said, if your tripod is gonna hold the weight of more than one person, two or three people, like if you're building a structure or a raised platform to build a shelter on, use your best judgment. All right, everybody, so that was building a bow saw, uh, cleaning up after a meal, and how to do a tripod, my way anyway. I hope you learned something. If you did, please remember to give me a like and a share and a subscribe, and uh, stay tuned. We'll see you for the next one. Have a good night.